What? Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 38th episode of the show Power Rangers Zeo, as well as the 193rd episode overall titled The Lore of Auric. We start this episode on an island that we've never seen before with a man and woman running for their lives, saying that machines are following them. They then narrowly escape from a rope net trap that was laid out for them and they run away, finding a skeleton? What is happening? They then make a break for a cave that they find going inside and moving through spider webs. Then the whole place starts rumbling, but the man sees light at the far end of the cave. Then as they are walking, torches light themselves as they're walking through a path. They find something called the Lost Tiki of Auric, which apparently they've been looking for for years. They start to go toward it, but the woman says, wait, and then she throws a rock and it just gets obliterated by a laser sensor, I guess. Then the man uses a whip to get the tiki and they're super excited about it. Then Louis Kaboom is there behind them demanding the tiki from them. They say never, but then Louis starts firing at them, so they have to give him the tiki. He celebrates the fact that he has the power of the auric now. Louis leaves and they lament that that was their only chance to get rescued. At the beach club, Kat walks up talking to Emily. Kat has a package for Tanya who is playing frisbee with Jason. She gives Tanya this big ass package and it's apparently from Aisha. Remember Aisha? It's a giant key and it's from Ashala because Tanya's parents wanted the key to be given to Tanya. Then there's also a map, which is a map of Mysterio Island, which Tanya explains that's where her parents went missing. But with this map, there's actually a chance that they're okay because their plane went down in the vicinity of Mysterio Island because they were looking for the lost Tiki of Auric. Tanya then says that now she can find them. Somehow, I mean, they're probably dead. Meanwhile, Tanya's parents are still in that cave and there's a rumbling. Tanya is then with Kat and Jason in the power chamber explaining to Zoran how she feels like she needs to go there to find her parents. Zoran says that she can use a teleportation system to get there, but just this once. She gives the key to the Tiki to Jason for safekeeping, and she teleports out. Then Trey is sending a transmission telling Jason that Pyramidus has been repaired. I feel like Trey's talking a lot lately. Meanwhile, Louis is out in the open trying to get Auric to open up, and Clank and Orbis show up talking about how he can't open it without the key. They also know that Jason has the key somehow, and they tell him that Jason is out in the open with it right now, so they should go get it. Then Cogs and Louie show up near Jason, who is just walking by the beach, and he does a sick flip before it's morphin' time. Then Louie hits the key out of Jason's hand, and the Cogs get it, handing it to Louie. They teleport away with the key. Stone is waxing his new car, which is a nice little throwback, and he asks Bulk and Skull to watch this one without letting it get crushed like the last one. Why would he ever risk this? Louis then uses the key on Auric, forcing Auric to grow giant. He is Auric the Conqueror, and Louis says that he will do as he says, but Auric refuses. He then just turns back into a tiki because he's clearly over this conversation. Well, way to go, Louis. Then Louis just hits Auric away, and Sprocket takes it away for funsies. Tanya lands on a beach on Mysterio Island, which you know it's an island because there's a skull and some plants. I guess. Her parents are still running around in this stupid cave and they get tripped by a rope which somehow starts a wall of fire in front of them and then the walls start to slowly come toward them. In space, Sprocket has Auric in the key and he unlocks Auric, making him giant and introducing himself again. Sprocket asks him for help because a team of supervillains is there to destroy the Earth. The Power Rangers. Sprocket is even crying about it, which is really disturbing because he's a robot. Then we see that Clank is actually cranking water through Sprocket to make him cry. This is amazing. Auric leaves to handle this. Jason tells Kat and Tommy about how he lost the key to Auric, and Rocky is there too, and the alarms go off in the power chamber. They see that Auric is in town. Zoran says that they should use the Super Zeo Megazord, but Jason suggests that he takes Pyramidus first to try to talk to Auric because he feels really responsible for all this happening because he was the one who lost the key in the first place. Jason shows up in his Zord in front of Auric, who immediately turns Pyramidus upside down and starts zapping him. The others see this and they realize that they need to call back Tanya, even though she's kind of busy on that island. Meanwhile, we see her entering the cave we saw before and she's found footprints in the dirt. She then gets spooked by a skeleton covered in spiderwebs before she just keeps going. Also, her parents are getting smushed and toasted still. Tanya is walking around, scared out of her mind, but then she just gets teleported out of there without warning. I mean, you guys could have given her a damn heads up. Whatever. It's morphin' time! The rangers show up in the Super Zero Megazord and they try to convince Auric that they're actually good and they mention Zordon. This makes Auric start to believe them for some odd reason automatically and Sprocket starts to scuttle away <laughs> and Auric reaches down grabbing him. Then he just blows Sprocket away sending him flying into some trees. Louis then sees the key and he tries to grab it but Billy has teleported it back to the power chamber. On the moon, Rita and Zed have a novelty sized magnet on top of their RV to get Louis Kaboom back to them. What the hell is going on? 
These are like the family members who are slowly going crazy. Finster goes to set the coordinates to get Kaboom back, but Rita pushes him out of the way to do it first, and she activates the super magnet, which fires off. Of course, it takes Stone's car, which is kind of a hilarious twist that I didn't see coming. Hulk and Skull see that it's gone and they're terrified. Stone shows up and he starts screaming at them because his car is gone. Then the car goes to the moon, hitting the magnet, which is hilarious. Zed is pissed because Rito messed up. Meanwhile, in the power chamber, Jason apologizes to Tanya about the key and she gives him back the key, saying that he's the keeper of Auric now. Okay. Also, they get really close and I want them to kiss because, damn it, Tanya deserves love. She then teleports out. Her parents are getting killed still, and she shows up finding them. She finds a crank which has a snake on it. After she moves the snake, she pulls it, and it stops everything. Her parents come to her asking who she is. She then says, Tanya, Tanya Sloan. They all cry and hold each other. The end. Wow, this episode was weird, and honestly, it'd be absolutely terrible if not for Nakia Baris. Seriously, if anyone was trying to play this character and give these emotions, it'd probably fall pretty flat, but damn it if Nakia doesn't shine. While the whole story about Tanya's parents being missing is super weird and kind of nonsensical because of all those time travel shenanigans that happened in season 3, I'll excuse it just because they remembered that they said how Tanya's parents went missing in season 3. It's good to get some sort of closure for her. I also don't mind that they brought in Orc this way because it was creative. But I also feel like they could have just said that he was a new version of Ninja or something. Seems like that would have been a much easier way to include him than just not mentioning Ninja like ever again. Oric is fine and honestly I don't think he gets much use throughout the rest of the season so it's kind of pointless now. Next time we're back to even more Gold Ranger focus because man this show loves their six rangers. But until then may the power protect you.